Here's a quick lesson to help you be way more efficient in the practice room so that you can see significant improvement in your playing in 30 days or less. Now, this lesson is gonna cover what I think is a perfect practice plan pretty much for anybody, but especially if you are a very busy person, if you've got a busy work schedule or school schedule, this is the same practice plan that I use and this is what I do professionally. But I've also had my moments where if I've been gigging a lot, I've had very little practice time. I've used this schedule and it's been really tremendously helpful. So the reason this schedule works well is first of all, because it's very clearly laid out. And second of all, because it can be adjusted to whatever time you have available to practice. And I think that's important because sometimes a lot of us get caught up in thinking, well, I've got to practice for 30 minutes or 60 minutes or an hour. And if I don't, then forget about it. I'm not making improvements. And the truth is that's not what's going to happen. The, the most important thing is to be consistent. So no matter what I tell you in this video, if your practice is not consistent, this is just not gonna work out. I'm sure you've heard of Yo-Yo Ma, the incredible cellist. He said diligent and consistent practice is really the key to mastery. Now there's another component to that. Practice not only needs to be consistent, but it needs to be properly spaced out. And what I recommend is no less than three days a week at 15 minutes per day to see any kind of improvement, right? Any kind of significant improvement. Now, obviously the more you do, the faster you're going to progress, but the most important thing really is to be consistent with your practice. I just, I just can't stress that enough. It's always better to, to uh, space your practice out and be consistent with that practice and that spacing than to try to get everything down in one shot, like cramming for a test. There are three components or three sections to this practice schedule. The first section is your warm-up section. The second one is what I like to call your strategic practice section or your problem solving section. And then the last one is what I like to call your performance practice uh, section. Now your warm-up section should take up about 10 to 15% of your total available practice time. And the material that you can cover in the warm-up it's quite varied. I made a video on what I use as my warm-up, and I highly recommend doing something like this. And I'll have a link to that at the end of this video and also in the description below. So if you haven't checked that out, I think that would be very helpful to you. And I find it super effective for my own practice. So the material that you cover really needs to come down to four components, essentially maybe even three. You need to have some kind of right hand contraction movement for all the fingers, right? Maybe not necessarily the pinky, unless you play flamenco. Uh, you need to have some kind of extension movements, right? Especially for uh, I, M, A, you can even have it in E. I, I recommend all four of these fingers. Uh, then you need to have something for the left hand. It could be slurs, right? Hammer-ons and pull-offs. Or you can combine the right hand and the left hand, right? So it's right hand, left hand coordination exercises. Again, minimally one, uh, one uh, contraction movement for the right hand, extension movement, and then combination so you get both hands in it uh, involved. In the warm-up, you wanna make sure that your physical effort level is very low. The exercises should be very easy to do, you should be able to do them at a medium to fast uh, tempo. And the only effort that you really wanna be making in the warm-up is cognitive effort. And what that means is you want to make sure that you're highly concentrated on what you're doing and you wanna be very relaxed doing so. The concentration needs to be concentration on the sound that you're producing, or at the very least on the relaxation of the movement and the speed of the movement, right? But you always want to prioritize quality of sound in everything that you do. So if you are doing an exercise that produces a sound on the guitar, then make sure that that sound is enjoyable to you. It's a pleasant sound, right? So don't just do technique for technique. That doesn't really get us anywhere except for injury, which I've experienced. So make sure to focus on musicality, make sure to focus on relaxation. All right, so that's our warm-up section. And we're gonna talk about, we're gonna, I'm gonna break this down for you in, in the video later on, but for now I wanna talk about each of these sections, all right? The second section that you wanna include in your practice plan is a strategic practice or problem solving section. This section should take up roughly 70 to 75% of your total practice time. And there are several ways that you can do that. You can break that down by either practicing, uh, you can have a whole section uh, session on technique, which is what I do. For example, I have usually two sections of practice in, in the, during my day. My early morning section is warm up, then I do technique, and then I follow it up with what's called a performance practice section, right? But usually my technique section is 70 to 75% of my practice where I focus on developing techniques that are gonna help me execute techniques that are in my repertoire, right? It's not just technique for technique sake. I'm not just gonna do scales just to do scales. I'm gonna do scales because they will help me play scales in my music. Now, the important thing is just like in the warm-up, when you're working on technique, you want to prioritize musicality, prioritize expression, right? Don't just play a scale flat, like the same volume. Play the scale with dynamic variation, so it changes in volume. Change your tone, change the, what's called the color of the, of the note. Make sure that it's fun. You really wanna get into the music, and I know that may, may sound cheesy, but I'm telling you, the more you can really get into the sound of what you're playing, 
the better it's going to be, the better results you're going to have. You're going to find that your fingers and your body and all that will do what it needs to do or they need to do to produce the sound that you want as long as you're prioritizing sound rather than mechanics. So anyway, option one, you could do your warm up and then you can focus the 70-75% of your strategic practice on technique and then correcting any errors that uh, come about during your technical practice, right? So it's important in this section of practice not to blow past your errors. You want to isolate them, identify them, isolate them, and do several corrections of those and then move on to the next thing. In another video, I'll talk about how to actually work on strategic practice effectively. So stay tuned for that. But the point is, it's this is all about problem solving. So you want to really identify your problems your technical problems that you're having when an exercise and an etude you want to improve it and then move on to the next thing you can come back to it and visit it later the second option is maybe you have your warm-up section and then you want to work on your repertoire now you're going to take a piece of music that you're working on or that you're learning and you're going to obviously try to learn it you want to try to memorize it make memorization your goal make playing it slowly and smoothly your goal and of course like the technique section that I talked about, your main goal is to gonna be, aside from learning, is gonna be to problem solve. So you wanna identify and improve any challenges that come up. Now that's just not technical challenges, that also has to do with musical challenges. So once you fix the mechanics of it, if you can't quite get your finger to a note, if you're missing the note, you wanna fix that first. And then once you fix it, you wanna focus on producing a sound that you like and even change it up a little bit to make it more interesting for your practice and to develop your technique faster, right? So again, option one, technique. Option two, repertoire. And then the third option is a split. And you can split that however you want. Let's say you only have one practice session per day. You're really busy, you can only do one practice session per day. And you wanna do some technique and you wanna do some repertoire work, right? Maybe you have, you know that you wanna play a piece that has a lot of arpeggios, but the repertoire that you're playing doesn't have a lot of, of arpeggios. So you wanna get both in. Fine, so you can think about splitting it however you want based on the techniques that you want to work on that day. For example, you could do 25% of your strategic practice that could be a technique, and then the other 75% could be repertoire. You could do a 40-60 split, a 50-50 split, it, it really doesn't matter. I think the most important thing is to experiment a little bit. Try 50-50, that doesn't work, that's too much technique. Try 40-60 and just play around with the numbers. That's also gonna change depending on the material that you're working on. If you have a piece that's more demanding, you're gonna, you know, it has a lot more challenge spots, it's more technically challenging, then you wanna spend more time on the repertoire piece than you do on the technique. So it could be maybe 25% technique, 75% repertoire, right? I hope that's clear. So again, to recap, three options for your strategic practice section. It's either all technique, right, after your warm up, all repertoire after your warm up, which is problem solving, and learning and improving, and then the split, the option to split it however you wanna split that, all right? That takes us into our last section of our practice plan, which is gonna be our performance practice. Now the performance practice is gonna take up, I, I usually like to, if you're starting out, I usually like to recommend 15%. Oh, it's, it's not a hard 15%, it uses some wiggle room, but I like to give it at least 15% uh, of uh, time in my practice, because obviously we wanna we want to play guitar. We're not just doing this to be technical monsters. Hopefully, we want to be able to play well and express the music. It, whether it's for ourselves or for others, we want to play musically. And the performance practice element, it's neglected way too much, and it really needs to be a part of your daily practice. So again, that's roughly about 15% of your practice. And what you're going to do there is, first of all, you need to change your mindset from the strategic mindset where you're problem solving now the mindset for performance needs to be literally performance so you're going to think enjoyment and expression right and i mean i'm i really mean enjoyment and expression you have to get into the music that you're going to play and and get away from the idea of stopping and correcting or getting flustered by by errors the whole purpose of this practice uh, section performance practice is to get used to playing your piece or your section of music or whatever it's a phrase it could be an etude it doesn't matter you want to get used to playing that from top to bottom without stopping, right? With a focus on playing dynamically or using some kind of expressive technique in there, some kind of expressive vari uh, variation or variability, and then really enjoying it. That's when I say get into the music, I mean enjoy it. Think about closing your eyes and really listening to the sound that you're producing. I can't stress how important that is. So when you're working on your performance practice, you want to pick a piece or again, a phrase or section of piece that's fairly easy-ish, right, that you already have under your hands, that you've already memorized. You don't want to be struggling to, you know, if it's a new piece, you don't want to be working on trying to figure out if you've memorized it. You've, you should have already done that work. 
So anything that's memorized, that can go into your performance practice. You, you have to already be able to play it smoothly from top to bottom. Right? It doesn't have to be fast, but it should be smooth and it should be memorized. There shouldn't be any uh, you know, egregious errors in there. Right? So you're playing the piece as if you were on stage, top to bottom, no stopping, have a lot of fun and be super expressive. And that's your performance practice. This is a great opportunity, by the way, to record yourself. You can video or audio record yourself. If you are new to the recording process for practice, I would just audio record yourself. And this is something that you can listen to later on. You can make notes on it and you can use that for your next day's, uh, for example, strategic practice section where you identify maybe an error or a couple of errors that you made in your performance and you want to isolate those and correct those. That's what I do when I do my performance practice. I record myself and then that's my basically my, my, uh, my table of contents, as it were, right? My outline for my next day's practice. And I just follow that and just check off each uh, challenge uh, one by one make sure I fix them and move on. And then little by little, your performance will get better for that piece. So a quick recap, three sections, warm up 10 to 15% of your total practice time, your strategic practice section, which is your problem solving section, that's 70 to 75% roughly of your total practice time. And then your performance practice time, which is about 15% of your practice time. So what I wanna do is give you three different options, three different schedules for one for a 60 minute option. If you have 60 minutes in your day, one for 30 minutes and one for 15 minutes. Okay, so I know some of us are so busy, we only have 15 minutes to practice. And that's fine, as long as once again, you're consistent with it. So here are the schedules. I'm gonna start with a 60 minute practice. So if you have 60 minutes and only one 60 minute session in your day to practice, you wanna make sure that your warm up is roughly six to nine or six to 10 minutes long. This, this 60 minute practice session, by the way, is the same as mine. This is how I break mine down. My warm up is usually about eight to 10 minutes, right? So think six to nine minutes. If you spend 10% of your practice in warm up, that's six minutes, 15% is nine minutes. Then your strategic practice section, 70 to 75%, that's gonna be 42 to 45 minutes of time. And you can divide that however you want, by the way. If you only wanna work on one piece, which is what I do often, by the way, that's fine. You can work on one piece at a time. I like to alternate, so I usually work on two new pieces at a time. So I'll do piece one on Monday, piece two on Tuesday, piece one on Wednesday, piece two on Thursday, so forth, I kind of alternate them. The, another thing that you can do is work on several pieces at once, but focusing on challenge spots. If you're working on just repertoire challenge spots, it could be five pieces and you have like two challenge spots per piece, that's fine. But in any event, it's 42 to 45 minutes roughly for your strategic practice if you have a total of an hour. And then you wanna end that with nine minutes, roughly nine to 10 minutes of performance practice where you work on either phrases, it could be a line or two lines, or a whole page of music, it doesn't matter, pieces that you already have under your hands. That's what you wanna play from top to bottom without stopping, again, with a focus on expression, enjoyment, and make sure you're relaxed. You wanna get rid of tension, right? Always get rid of tension when, actually, when you do any of these, warm up strategic practice or performance practice. The more we want, the more, the more we can, um, the more we can associate relaxation with the guitar, the faster you're gonna progress. Tension, think of it Think of it this way, tension opposes progress. So the tense, more tense we are, the slower we're gonna progress. In fact, we can hurt ourselves, and I have done that in the past, and I'm sharing this with you so that you don't make that same mistake. So again, remember, lots of relaxation. If you only have 30 minutes available, then your warm up of 10 to 15% of your total practice time is gonna be roughly three to four and a half minutes. I usually round up, so three to five minutes, your strategic practice section is gonna be 21 to 22 and a half minutes. You can think 21 to 23 minutes. Uh, and by the way, I know these numbers, they're kind of funny numbers, but I would recommend setting a timer, literally set a timer for these um, and so that you know that you're not going over. My schedule is very, very black and white. I don't have extra time when I practice. It has to be done at by a certain time or a certain amount of time so that I can continue to do what I need to do for the rest of my day. And I know a lot of us, especially if you're a busy adult or, or busy students in school, you might have that same situation. So go ahead and set a timer. Whenever that timer goes off, you're done, no matter what, right? And whatever you didn't do this this day, you can pick up the next day, right? So it's okay. Just I, I do that all the time and I find it super helpful. Otherwise, I'll keep going and I'll lose track of time and then the rest of my day is, is kind of a mess. I gotta play catch up. So again, it's three to five minutes of warm up, 21 to 23 minutes of strategic practice and four and a half, five minutes of performance practice. Again, set up in the same way that I talked about earlier. And then finally, if you're super, super busy, right? And you only have 15 minutes of practice, that might feel like it's gonna be a waste of time and you're not gonna do anything, you're not gonna get anything out of that, but you will, I promise that you will, if you, once again, are consistent with your practice. Again, think minimum three days a week, 15 minutes a day, 
and you want to repeat the same material by the way in this particular case you do want to repeat material uh, because it's just too little time to, to alternate you're not gonna you need to you need to have you need to have the material from one day um, be validated the next day so that you can make that cumulative right so again same material three days a week 15 minutes a day that's fine as long as you're consistent with that you're going to see progress you're gonna see progress I promise right and of course like I mentioned earlier the more you can practice the better sometimes I think with uh, some of my students who only have 15 minutes to practice they'll set the timer for 15 minutes and then sure enough 15 minutes goes in like and they think to themselves or they'll look at the clock and they'll say oh you know i've got i have an extra five minutes let me do an extra five minutes of performance practice or ah, there's this one little spot that i keep making a mistake on let me fix that real quick so it's often the case that you may find an extra minute or two or five to review some extra stuff and then again the more you practice consistently as long as you're practicing correctly then the faster you will progress right so 15 minute practice time that's basically one to three minutes of warm up. Technically, it's one and a half to 2.25 minutes of warm up, right? So you can round up or round down. You can do one to two minutes of warm up. It's 10 and a half to 11.25, 11 and a quarter minutes of strategic practice, which is a lot, by the way. Once you get into strategic practice and you're working on a piece that's challenging, 10 minutes is actually kind of a lot of time to spend on, on, uh, on, on difficult material and problem solving. Uh, you always want to make sure to limit yourself too. You don't, don't want to spend 10 minutes all on one challenge. Limit yourself to two minutes per challenge. Try that first and see how that goes. Timer goes off, next challenge spot. So you've got five challenge spots, two minutes per challenge spot, for example. Right? You can play around with those numbers, but that's how I do it. You know, I usually spend about two to five minutes for, per challenge, depending on how much practice time I have available. So again, 10 and a half to 11 and a quarter minutes for strategic practice. And then you can end your practice with two and a quarter or two to three minutes of performance practice. Quick note, now I know I'm making this video primarily for those of us who are super busy and we need to have a practice schedule that's super clear so that we can be as productive as possible in the practice room. But I do wanna make it make it clear that even if you're really busy, you may want to play your piece or pieces for somebody. You may, Basically, you wanna have a performance. That performance could be for family and friends, or maybe you're pay, playing for uh, you know a community center or concert hall. If that's the case, if you're preparing any of your music, any of your pieces for performance, then you have to adjust the practice plan accordingly as you get closer and closer to your performance date. By the time you're about three to four weeks away from your performance date, your, your um, strategic practice section and your performance practice section should flip. So basically you want to make about 70 to 75% of your total available practice time performance practice and about 10 to 15% strategic practice, where that strategic practice is focused only on fixing the errors that come up in your performance practice. I hope that's clear. So again, little by little, you want to minimize your strategic practice time and increase your performance practice time accordingly. So that's what I do when I have any events or recordings or performances coming up, I'll adjust accordingly. And then if you don't have anything coming up, you can go back to your default, which is gonna be mostly strategic practice and then you're ending with performance practice now second note <laughs> it's okay just to say screw it i don't want to spend like if you get a day and you just want to have fun and enjoy the music you have to do that like i have for me it's one day a week for me it's saturdays saturdays I, granted i do some work but most of my practice is just playing and enjoying the music it's kind of like my i think of it as like my concert you know practice a day but i don't even think too much about performing as much as i do just enjoying the music and being expressive so you have to have those days in that, in your schedule. Even if you have three days a week and you only have 15 minutes a day, do two days a week of you know, hardcore intense problem solving and then pick that last day, your last 15 minute session, just to have fun, you know, enjoy the guitar. If you can, try to have fun with what you've been working on, what you've worked on earlier that week. And then that way you can just reinforce it, especially reinforce the enjoyment part of it, which I think can unfortunately go out the window sometimes that we spend too much time problem solving. It get, kind of turns into a job, it starts not to become fun. So no, don't let the fun go away. That's got to be part of practice. Practice is it's work, but at the end of the day, it it should it should give you some kind of gratification. You know, even if you've done a lot of hard work, by the end of your practice session, you should feel good about the work you've done and know that it's helping you improve. Right. So please try this schedule. Try it for the next thirty days, and then come back to this video and please let me know in the comments how it how it went for you. I know it, again if you're consistent with your practice, it's going to help. I would love to hear about it. If it's not helping, let me know too, so that I can help you figure out an adjustment. You know, I, I will respond. You know, at least I do my very very best to respond to everybody who writes to me. Uh, so I like doing that because 
part of the reason I'm doing this is to be helpful so that you don't have to deal with the struggles I went through. Uh, so please write in the comments. Let me know what you're struggling with if this practice plan didn't work for you and why you think it didn't, and maybe we can find a solution. And if it did, let me know as well. I'd love to hear it. One warning though, please do not overdo it. You know, again, I think, especially for those of us who are either trying to do this professionally or, you know, I know I have some students who are retired or, you know, about to retire and we can get a little gung-ho, maybe too gung-ho into practice. It's the same, the same problem can come about in, in, in those, both, both of those scenarios where we just get too, I don't know, it's not obsessed, but just too excited about the guitar and we practice way more than we should and then we end up getting injured as a result. So I wanna just set some, some fairly strict you know, limits for practice. I would say if you're starting out, you're new, you're beginner, intermediate, start with 15 minutes a day, no more than one session per day, three days a week. And as your body starts to get used to that schedule, then think about increasing by five minutes per session every one to two weeks. You know, and little by little, you can build that up to about 60 minutes. Now that's not a black and white thing. Maybe it's five to 10 minutes, but start small, right? So that you don't injure yourself. Because otherwise, if, you, if you're not used to sitting in this position and practicing and doing all these techniques, and all of a sudden you just do an hour, I know it's just an hour, but you'll get hurt. I guarantee you're gonna get hurt and you won't feel it until after you're done with practice. That's usually the worst thing. You don't feel it during, you feel it after, afterwards. So build up your practice time slowly, right? When you build up that practice time, try to limit yourself to no more than, this is, this is the maximum, by the way. Unless you're a seasoned practice <laughs> practicer and player, if you are doing this for fun, uh, even if you're doing it as a professional, but not as a solo concert musician, then I would limit yourself to no more than three practice sessions per day at a maximum of 60 minutes per session, and those need to be split out. I would recommend that you split them out, at least have a minimum of 30 minutes, if not 60 minutes between each section. Personally, I have roughly an hour and a half between my first session and my second session, and I feel that that's good. And if I have a third one, several hours go by. Now, I'm not a concert guitarist, but when I used to perform a lot, I would practice easily four to five hours a day, and they would be split out quite a bit, split apart quite a bit. So that's, again, Maximum three practice sessions per day at no more than 60 minutes per practice session. I would do no more than six days per week. And again, these are this is the maximum, right? You don't wanna go past this. Give yourself a day off, please give yourself a day off. You want to avoid injury because if you get injured, that's gonna hold you back. Then you're gonna to have to restart again. It's a giant pain in the ass. So don't get injured, take lots of breaks. Like I've mentioned this in other videos, always take breaks. And of course, like always, Make sure to stay relaxed when you practice. Always relax, scan your body if there's any tension. It sometimes could be in the jaw, the shoulders, you know, you get this going on, uh, the hips, anything. Even if it's cognitive tension, you wanna relax. Take a deep breath. Anytime you feel any kind of tension in your body, remind yourself that tension opposes progress. So you have to be very mindful of tension, right? And scan your body, take a deep breath, relax the tension, especially when you run into challenges. That's when they're gonna come up. And that's when relaxation is gonna actually help you overcome those challenges faster. So deep breath, relax, enjoy the music. Don't forget to be super musical, super expressive. That's gonna help you. Like always, if you're getting value from this video, please click the like button. That does help my channel grow on YouTube. I greatly appreciate that. You can subscribe, click the notification bell if you wanna get notified for the next video. And also I have some super helpful links in the description below that I've added. It includes uh, my Instagram and my website and stories about how I got started and how I struggled and got out of that. And then also I started a new Facebook, a free private Facebook community, which you're welcome to join. That is dedicated to helping musicians accelerate progress, right? And I will start that soon if I haven't already, where I'm gonna just start uploading quick videos on thoughts that I have either during my practice or after my practice throughout the day uh, on just tools that I've learned over the years that have I found super helpful, not just for myself, but also for my students. So make sure to check it out, that out and, uh, and I will see you next time. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.